Mancha kalpa turubya shta krupa sindhubya eva cha patita nam pabane babashne babo namo namaha oma jnana timananda sha jnana chana shalaka ya chakshu shon miladam yantasma sri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shumati bhakti vedanta swami te namane namaste saraswati devi gauravani prachani nirdeshe shashanwari pashtat deshtane Welcome back to the Bhakti Shastri course. In our previous lesson, we were discussing the first 12 verses of chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge, Rajaguyam, devotional service, Krishna's relationship with the material world in verses 4 to 10, and Krishna's evaluation of those who deride him when he descends in the human form, Mamudha. We will conclude the ninth chapter in this session. Let's take a look at uh, a bit of an overview of the ninth chapter, see what's going on. Raja Vidya, we've discussed Krishna's relations with the material world, the impersonalists are minimized in verses 11 to 12, Mahatmas and three other kinds of worshippers we'll be discussing shortly, demigod worship minimized in verses 20 to 25, and Ananda Bhakti Yoga, verses 26 to 34. In text number 13, Krishna explains, Mahatmanas to Mamparta, Daivim Prakritim Ashritaha, Bhajanti Ananamanasa, Gyatva Buddha Anima Vyayam. O son of Pritta, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of God, it original and inexhaustible. So those who are not deluded is comparing to those who are deluded in text 12. Mogasha, Mogakamasha, Mogagyana, Vichesha, Shaha, Rakshashim, Asharim, Chaiva, Prakritim, Mohini, Mashita. They are Prakritim, Mohini, Mashita, taking shelter of the material energy. Rakshashim, Asharim, <laughs> Prabhupada explains they are the uh, demoniac and atheistic views, mogasha, mogakarmana, mogasha, their desires are thwarted, mogakarmana, their activity is, their, their fruitive activities are, are fraud, mogagyana, and even their knowledge. So those who are not understanding the parambhavam, the supreme uh, transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord are described in this verse. And then again, in comparison, Prabhupada's explaining those who are not deluded, mahatmas, the great souls, uh, under Devim Prakriti Mashritaha, under the protection of the divine nature. Devim Prakriti Mashritaha, we can say, uh, and text number 13, 14, Satatam Kirtayanta Mam Yatantascha Drida Abrataha Namashantascha Mam Bhaktya Nitta Jukta Upashite. Just by examining the example of Srila Prabhupada's life, we can see so clearly the symptoms of a Mahatma, Devim Prakriti Mashritaha, Prabhupada so absorbed in the divine energy and taking shelter of the divine energy, absorbed in fulfilling the order of the spiritual master, d dedicated his life to that uh, complete conviction that the order of the spiritual master can be achieved, mm. uh, complete shelter of the spiritual energy. Bhajanti Ananda Manasa, Prabhupada's conviction, Prabhupada's focus on the service and the worship of Lord Sri Hari, and so uh, uh, exalted. Gyatva Buddha Adi Mavyayam. Prabhupada was so expert in every field. He was able to deal with scientists, he was able to deal with politicians, he was able to deal with humanists, he was able to deal with different religionists. Every type of person Prabhupada was so expert in dealing with because Gyatva Buddha Adi Mavyayam, he realized that Krishna was the source of everything. In this connection, Prabhupada once gave an analogy that if you know uh, zero to nine, there's not many numbers, huh? zero to nine, count on two hands. If you know zero to nine and the meaning, the significance of zero to nine, then you know everything. I, I remember when we were in primary school, we were learning how to count. I remember learning 
zero to nine. We used blocks. There were different blocks, and they were different colours. Uh, I think uh, two was red. It was about that big, and uh, three was yellow, a little bit bigger. Four was twice as long, and that was blue. And in this way, by by it's, that's actually called kinesthetic learning. By filling the object, we could understand that four is twice as big as two. Anyway, we had we had little blocks that got all the way to nine. <laughs> And uh, I still rem remember that, a very brilliant uh, learning resource. So we understand the concepts. Nine, three times three is nine. Two times four is eight. Five and two is seven. You get those concepts basically uh, situated in your head. Prabhupada explains if you, if you know zero to nine, uh, you know all mathematics. Because basically all arithmetic, uh, permutations, combinations, uh, algebra, Everything is simply different arrangements of zero to nine. So in this way, Prabhupada gave the example that when you know Gyadva Bhutani Madhvayam, when you know Krishna is the source of everything, then you know everything. And Prabhupada was so expert in dealing with every type of person in every situation because he knew that Krishna was the underlying principle behind everything. Satatam Kirtayantamam, constantly chanting the Holy Name. Prabhupada, what an example of Satatam Kirtayantamam, chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, constantly glorifying Krishna, constantly discussing uh, the spreading of Krishna's mission, uh, writing uh, books, uh, constantly absorbed, constantly absorbed in Krishna Kirtan without interruption. Yatantascha Drida Abrataha, here we are in Susirada Rashbihari Mundir, Iskon Juhu. What an example of determination, even when such great, greatly empowered. Uh, assistants and delegated preachers of Prabhupada's mission, they gave up hope. No, no, it's impossible. We'll, we'll, we'll just start afresh, go somewhere else. Prabhupada was so determined to acquire this land in Iskon Juhu and build a beautiful temple for Sisi Radha Rashbihari. What determination! Irrevocable, unbreakable determination. Yutantasya, endeavor and determination to serve the Lord. Nitta Jukta Upayashate, entire life of service to Lord Hari. Uh, I spent quite regular time in Kolkata, residing in Sridham Mayapur. I regu regularly visit Kolkata, and oftentimes we, when we're near Howrah Bridge, we reflect on Prabhupada's childhood. From the young age, five, six years old, Prabhupada was organizing preaching. Uh, the Rathiyatra, and such a nice leela there, described how he, he went to the market, was unable to find the Rathiyatra cart. Or there was carts there, but so expensive. And then just one Bengali lady happened to, say, happened to meet and say, oh, I have, a, I have a, 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 an old Rathiyatra card, you can take that. Just, she, she was perhaps some demigod, Debota, a Devi who appeared just to perform, participate in Prabhupada Leela. And uh, so Guru Mohan, he purchased that old card and then Prabhupada, they personally, uh, uh, Guru Mohan, they, they hired a carpenter and they repaired that card. Nitta Jukta Upayashate, organizing the preaching and whole life, Prabhupada, mm. always meditating and worshipping Lord Hari. And then un unto his last breath, worshipping the Lord, following the order of Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Nitta Jukta Upayashate, Prabhupada, constantly, eternally engaged in the service of Lord Hari. What an example of a, of a Mahatma Shuddha Prabhupada Ki Jai. Prabhupada's commenting in the purport to text 13. As described in the second verse of this chapter, not only is this devotional service easy, but it can be performed in a happy mood. One does not need to undergo severe penance and austerity. He can live this life in devotional service, guided by an expert spiritual master, and in any position, either as a household, or a sannyasi, or a brahmachari, in any position, and anywhere in the world, he can perform this devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and thus become actually a Mahatma, a great soul. In verses 15 to 19, Krishna goes on to explain other categories of aspiring transcendentalists who are not actually in the category of Mahatma. Now those who are directly worshipping the Supreme Lord, personality of God is Sri Krishna, they have been described as Mahatma, and there are others, worshippers, they cannot conceive of the Supreme Personality of God directly on account of being less advanced. Therefore they have been described here as Anne, others. So others, they worship the Absolute Truth in these three different ways. They're not completely rejected, the others. They're others, they're not in the first class category of the Ananda Bhakti, 
Ananda Bhakta, Mahatma, but there are others who are also on the path and they're described in three categories. Ekatvena, the monists who worship self, uh, the, the self as one with the Lord. They're described in verses 11 to 12. Vishvatomukam, the worshippers of the universal form. They're described in verses 16 to 19. And Pritakvena, Bahuda, those who are con concocting different forms of God or also those who are Bahuda, worshipping the different forms of the demigods. They're described in verses 20 to 25. Regarding the Vishvato Mukam, the worshippers of the universal form, it's interesting to note that in verses 17 and 18, verse 16, Aham Kratur, Aham Jagyai Svadaham, Aham Oshadam, Mantraham, Aham Evajam, Aham Agni, Aham Hutam. I am the ritual, I am the sacrifice, I am the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter, I am the fire, I am the offering. I am the father of the universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am the Rig, Sama, and Yajur Vedas. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place, and the eternal seed. Now, in the purports to text 17 and 18, Prabhupada mentions the name Krishna 38 times. <laughs> Just for your information. Anye. Anye means others. So they have not been given so much importance, although they have been accepted. They are also accepted because they have taken into the line. They are better than those who are just like animals, simply eating, sleeping, and defending, and mating. Now, Krishna again further analyzes the topic of demigod worship. And in this ninth chapter, which is the Rajaguya, the most confidential knowledge, we'll see that Krishna, his, his evaluation of deity worship is much deeper than what we saw in chapter 3 and chapter 7. Uh, this is the most confidential uh, teachings that Krishna is presenting on demigod worship. And um, Let us discuss these. In, in chapter 3, Actually, Krishna was recommending demigod worship. Agaya Indriya Rama Moga Parta Sajivati. If you're not involved in the Evam Pravatitam Chakram, the cycle of uh, performing sacrifice and then acquiring the various requirements of the uh, natural elements and the minerals and the, the sun and the water, all of these things which are provided by the demigods, one utilizes for prosperity and with the, uh, from one has to perform sacrifice from all of those pr uh, pr goods that are provided, all those facilities. Just as in the same way, living in the city, we are provided with so much facility, we're running water, electricity, even to use the highways, you have to pay tax, you have to pay road tax, you have to pay for the water, you have to pay for the electricity. If you stop paying, then after some time they will cut the supply. So similarly, one is obliged to worship the demigods and in that way one can live happily in this world. Krishna is explaining that in the third chapter, Karma Yoga, Shreya Svadharma. One has to perform his Vanashram Dharma, one has to perform the prescribed sacrifices and in this way he can enjoy prosperity in life. Now in the seventh chapter, Krishna explains that those who are worshipping the demigods are less intelligent. Antavattu palamtesham tapdavati albamedasham because the uh, boons that the demigods are providing are temporary and actually my eye of hitam hitam. Those boons are simply provided uh, under the authorization of the Supreme Lord. Tasha tasha chalam shradham tam eva vididham yaham. And the Lord is also providing the steady faith that the demigod worshipper has in uh, worshipping the demigod. But uh, therefore, uh, those who are less intelligent worship the demigods and the result is not the same. Devan, Deva, Yujo, Yanti, Mad Bhakti, Yanti, Mahapi. Clear distinction. Worship of the demigods will keep you in the material world even though you may be elevated to a higher status. Devan, uh, Mad Bhakti, Yanti, Mahapi and worship of the Supreme Lord Hari will take you to the transcendental realm. Now in the ninth chapter, Krishna explains that in the Rajaguya section of Bhagavad Gita that Yajanti Aviti Purva. The worship of the demigods is full of mistakes and it is performed in the wrong way. Krishna, uh, Prabhupada is explaining 
in lecturing in 1966 on the topic. Worship demigods may be accepted if people know that these demigods are authorized agents of the Supreme Lord. There is acceptance of the Supreme Lord, but those fools who do not accept the Supreme God and misunderstand this particular type of demigod is all in all, they are doing nonsense. They are placing so many competitors of the Supreme Lord, that is avidi purvakam, that is illegal. Nobody can be competitor of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is asam urdva, no one is greater than the Supreme Lord, no one is equal. Oftentimes you, you see in different places the, the Sanatan Dharma temples and uh, all the deities are there and all the deities are placed on the equal platform and in this way the priests are attracting so many uh, devotees. Hmm? Uh, yes, we have your deity, we have your deity, yes. We have. <laughs> but this is Avidi Purva. This is the, not the correct way of worshipping the Supreme Lord because he is, uh, no one can be compared or no one can be considered to be equal to the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada, uh, in texts 20 and 20, 21, 23, he gives some anal analogies. Text 21, Tetam Bhuntva Svargalokam Vishalam Shinei Punya Ma Vishanti Evam trai dharma anuprabhanam gatagata kama kama labante. When they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasures and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to the mortal planet again. Those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. Krishna again clearly giving distinction uh, between the worship of demigods and the worship of himself. Gatagata kama labala. Gatagatam kama kama labante evam trayudharmam even following the principles of the three Vedas worship of the demigods still uh, they achieve only repeated birth and death in the purport uh, Prabhupada gives an, an, an analogy of the Ferris wheel the Ferris wheel goes up so you, you practice at worshipping demigods you can attain all sorts of punya and uh, you can enjoy Bhuntva Svagalokam Vishalam for a long time Bhuntva Svagalokam on the heavenly planets but the credits that were acquired through worship of the demigods Kshinei they're exhausted Kshinei Punya Marchalokam Vishanti and one returns again to the material world in that way actually all the effort that one is placing into the worship of the demigods ultimately becomes fruitless Mahabrabhu also in his teachings too Rupa Goswami explains Brahmanda Brahmate, Brahmanda Brahmate, this Bra uh, uh, Brahmando, well, Brahmate, we're wandering in this material world, sometimes going up, sometimes going up, sometimes going up, heavenly planets and sometimes hellish planets. Hmm. Kona Bhagavan Ajeev, such, some fortunate soul, Kona Bhagavan, of course in Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement, any, Jekono, anyone can become fortunate, whether you're pious or impious, Kono, Jekono, anyone, Bhagavan. Guru Krishna Kripa, by, Bhaktala, by the mercy of Krishna and the spiritual master, one can get the seed of devotional service. So we're wandering in this material world, and worship of the demigods ultimately is of no real benefit for the progressive development of the spiritual life of the living entity. And text 23, Yipi Anya Devata Bhakta Yujante Shradayan Vitaha Anya Devata Bhakta, those who are devotees of other uh, Devata, demigods, Yajante, Shraddhayanvita, and who are worshipping them with great faith. That will also be described in the 11th chapter, in, in the 17th chapter, when we reach the 17th chapter, divisions of faith. They may have great faith, but that faith may be mixed, maybe is influenced by the modes of material nature and n not, n will not help one on the spiritual path, even though they have great faith. Yajante, Shraddhayanvita, to be maam evakunteya, yajante avidi purvakam. They're actually worshipping me alone, but in the wrong way. In this purport, Prabhupada gives several very useful analogies. He's explaining that uh, watering the yata tulamula nashit and in a tripyanti tatskanda buja pashakaha. By watering the root, one automatically, tripyanti, one satisfies the skanda, the trunk, the branches, and the upashaka, the, 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 the twigs. They're all. Uh, nourished very easily by watering the root. If you if you independently water each twig, each leaf, actually the, the the tree will dry up. 
So this is the analogy of, watering, uh, of worshipping the demigods and, and not w w worshipping the Supreme Lord. And similarly, by feeding the stomach, the stomach uh, uh, one automatically sa uh, satisfies all the senses. By feeling in the stomach, all of the senses become satisfied. Another analogy that Srila Prabhupada gives here is uh, the bribe. That worshipping demigods is like paying a bribe to the government officers. You can get some benefit, but ultimately you're simply avoiding the actual prerogative and real responsibility of the living entity to surrender to the will of the supreme the government, and those who are properly following the laws of the government, no need for them to pay bribes. So this is avidi purva, this is the wrong way, Krishna here is clearly declaring in the Raja Guja that he's not, he's not accepting, not, not appreciating, not recommending the worship of demigods. It is done in the wrong way. It is avidi purva, it is full of mistakes. And very important verse which Srila Prabhupada regularly quotes, once again indicating the distinction between the worship of the demigods and worship of the Supreme Lord. Hari, Janti Deva Prata Devan Pitrin Janti Pitri Brataha Bhutani Anti Bhuteja Janti Mat Yajino Pimam. Those who worship the demigods take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. And those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. Prabhupada's commenting, Krishna says, Janti Deva Prata Devan. How you nonsense say that everyone goes to God? This is nonsense. You can go to Shiva, you can go to Indra, you can go... There are so many planets and you'll go there. And that is reasonable. And how, how do you say, whatever ticket I purchase, I will go to this Delhi? Even <laughs> Prabhupada, uh, uh, he's of course uh, describing a, uh, buying a train ticket, but, but now everyone's flying Indigo, Jet, you go Indigo, the departure land, so many you'll see. One after another, Coimbatore, Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai. <laughs> you roll up to the Mumbai uh, uh, with, your, with your Delhi ticket, not possible. It's a very wonderful analogy Prabhupada gives. Therefore, they are nonsense mudha rascals. Um, but this is the, this is the, the, the propagation that uh, is still very popular in India, in Bengal particularly. Mm. Every, po every path will lead to the same. Mm. This is rascaldom. Mudhas, rascals, they do not know what is God, what is demigod, what is Lord Shiva, what is Lord Vishnu or Brahma, they do not know. If a woman says, oh, everyone is my husband, then she is a prostitute, that's all. Let's have a look at what's going on in the ninth chapter up to this point. Rajavija, Krishna's relationship with the material world, impersonalists, min minimized Mahatma, and other kinds of worshippers. Demigod worship, also Krishna is very emphatic in his analysis in this chapter. And now texts 26 to 34 are explaining Ananda Bhakti Yoga, unalloyed pure devotional service. Ananda Chintayantamam, Yejana Payupashate, those who always wor worship me with exclusive devotion, Tesham Nitta Abhijuktanam. Meditating on my transcendental form. Nitta, constantly. Jogakshema and Bahamiya hum. For them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Here we're entering into the uh, sublime Rajaguya, most confidential teachings of Bhagavad Gita. The heart, the very heart of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is explaining here how he becomes particularly inclined to the devotee who's practicing Ananda Bhakti. Ananda Chintayantamam, constantly. Uh, worshipping me, constantly thinking about me, concentrating, Prabhupada says, Yejana Paryupa Ashate, those who worship, Jejan Paryupa, those who worship me in that way, Tesham Nitta Abhijuktanam, constantly engaged in serving me. I provide everything that they have. The devotee, uh, he forgets his, his own material circumstances, being absorbed in the service of the Lord. And Krishna, uh, uh, he provides everything that the devotee requires. Everything that the devotee has, he protects, and whatever the devotee requires, he provides. There's an interesting story that you'll find in Bhujan Prabhu's narration of the surrender unto me, where he describes Arjuna Acharya. He couldn't, he couldn't, he thought it was a mistake. Ahami, Ahami, I personally uh, take the burden for my devotee. He thought that was a mistake, he crossed it out and then uh, went off to the market. And then uh, the, the, a, a, a bluish boy and a, and a beautiful white uh, colored boy came 
uh, and provided so many goods to his wife, so many uh, from the market. And as they were leaving, he, uh, they showed them the, 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 the whip marks on their backs. And they said, Arjuna Acharya, he forced us to bring this. Whoa, that cruel Arjuna Acharya. Uh, Madhuji was very upset. She fed the boys. And she also took prasad, being dissatisfied with her husband. When he came back, she said, what is this, Devi? You are taking? Oh, who did, why are you, who are you there? You beat those innocent boys. Well, what innocent boys? Yeah, they came. Look, they, they, they brought so many things from the market. They said you forced them. They said you beat them. I never saw any boys. What, 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 what were they like? One beautiful, bluish. One whitish, beautiful. And Arjuna Charger realized that in order to confirm his statement in Bhagavad Gita, he personally came and uh, 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 he uh, adjusted his commentary. He had scratched it out, the word, Vahami. I per he again put it back. Krishna personally takes interest in his devotee. Because the devotee is, is, uh, is so much absorbed in, in serving and loving him. And the devotional process is so easy, so easy. Krishna is so easily satisfied. Patram Pushpam Palam, text 26. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam. Yomi Bhakta Prayachati. Just the devotion is what he's interested in. If you offer me with love and devotion, a leaf, a fruit, a flower, a water. Tadaham Bhaktu Paritam Ashnami Prayatatmanaham. Prabhupada is explaining how so, it's very easy to serve Lord Hari. And he's uh, reciprocating with the loving uh, uh, mood of the devotee. Even though he's not hungry, he's the proprietor of everything. He will eat ashnami. He eats uh, because he's obliga obligated to reciprocate with the devotee's loving intention. In this way, the, the, the uh, glories of pure devotional service are enunciated by Krishna in these verses. Yat koroshi, whatever you do, yat ashnashi, whatever you eat, yat johoshtadasi, yat whatever austerity you perform, whatever you offer and give away. Yat tapasyasi kuntaya, whatever austerity you perform, tat kurusha madarpanam. You do that for me. You offer that to me. Subha, Shubha, Palameva. In this way, the Shubha, Ashubha, the uh, auspicious and inauspicious results of work. Moksha, uh, Sheikh, Karma, Bandana. You are delivered from Sanyasha, Yoga, Juktatma. In this way, being situated in Krishna consciousness, Vimukta, Mahama, Pashati, you will attain me. Krishna is explaining his special affection and consideration for the devotee engaged in Ananda Bhakti. Samaham sarva bhuteshu, I'm equal to all living entities. Nami dvesha asti na priya. I'm not particularly inclined nor uh, averse to any living entity. But, jay bhajanti tu, tu means kintu, means but. Ye bhajanti tu, mam bhakta, those who worship me, who serve me, bhajanti, who, who serve me with devotion. Mai te, they're in me, te shu chapiyaham. And I become a friend to them. In the purport, Prabhupada is explaining how the devotee is like a, a gold ring and the Lord is like a diamond. And they simultaneously enhance each other. The relationship between Krishna and his devotee is very sublime. He becomes a friend. He becomes a friend. Just as the devotee is... Uh, in the seventh chapter, Prabhupada quoted the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mad anya te na janati. Mad anya, besides me, te na janati. They're not interested in anything. Naham te byo managapi. And similarly, reciprocally, I am not in, interested in anything else apart from them. In this way, Krishna, his only business is to fully focus on and reciprocate with the love of his devotee. Ami bina bondu ado uke ache ito uma. Taku Bhaktivinoda is describing the mood of Sigorsunda. Ami bina, besides me, bondu ado ke ache ito. You have no other friend apart from me. And the extent to which Krishna can reciprocate with his devotee is so sublime. Rasha Sheka. He is the most personal. He is the most equipped to recipro reciprocate with the devotee in any way that the devotee desires to worship and love him. Krishna is carrying on even more confidential principles that uh, the special facilities that he provides for his Ananda Bhakta even if one performs most abominable sudurachara activity bhajate maam Ananda Bhakti if he carries on with Ananda Bhakti with worshipping me uh, and loving me as prescribed in the 
uh, s system of Rupa Goswami, how to practice loving devotional service to the Lord. And chanting His name, offering, bowing down, seeing the Lord, hearing about the Lord. The, uh, primal, the principal activities of Bhagavad Bhakti are hearing and chanting, glorifying the Lord, hearing the Lord, chanting the Holy Name. If He carries on in the devotional practice, even though, uh, as Prabhupada explains, uh, in the... Uh, Unpremeditated circumstances due to previous habits, if one shu durachara is induced to perform most abominable activity, sadur eva samantabhya, Krishna considers him holy and saintly, samyag bhyavasito hisa, because he's firmly engaged in his determination to carry on and serve the Lord. Kshipram bhavadi dharamatya kshasachantim nagachati. Quickly, as a result of his uh, bhajanti ananda, uh, as a result of his bhajatema mananda, but carrying on with the process of devotional service, kshipram bhavati dharma, he quickly becomes righteous, and those inebrities will be removed from his character, shasha shantim nagachiti, and he attains lasting peace, konti apratijanihi nami bhakti pranayashiti. Also, interesting to note here that konti apratijanihi, that Krishna is declaring the Arjuna. You declare it boldly because, as we saw from the Leela of uh, Bhishma Dev and Krishna and Mahabharat, that Krishna is more concerned with maintaining the, the words of his devotee than even his own words. So, when Bhishma, Bhishma Dev informed Duryodhana that tomorrow I will kill those five Pandavas, and here are the special five arrows that I will reserve for them, unless Krishna himself breaks his own promise to intervene in the battle, I will destroy all of the five Pandavas. And Krishna uh, was there, Arjuna, on the chariot. You see the beautiful picture. Bhishma Dev was fighting so ferociously that Arjuna almost gave up his life. And then Krishna, seeing the predicament, he personally got down from the chariot, picked up the broken wheel, and, and, and running toward Bhishma Dev, and showed him, Are you satisfied now? You stop this. <laughs> Are you satisfied now? I've broken my promise. Are you satisfied? And, and Bhishma Dev, seeing this, he was so, so overwhelmed with love. And he was ready. And then the, the day ended. And uh, later in Srimad Bhagavatam, describing the departure of Sri Bhishma Dev, uh, he's meditating on this moment. Actually, the, uh, our Acharyas described that Bhishma Dev was in a more fortunate situation because Arjuna was seeing, the, uh, seeing Krishna from behind, but Bhishma Dev was seeing the beautiful face uh, with the, uh, the ash that had covered the body of the Lord and the, and the perspiration, drops of perspiration, and also spots of blood where he had also been. Uh, attacked by Bhishma Dev's weapons, and as he, out of love for Arjuna, he was breaking his own promise and maintaining Bhishma Dev's promise that unless Krishna personally intervene, I'll kill the Pandavas. So in this way here, Krishna is declaring, Arjuna, you declare it boldly, because Krishna becomes more interested in maintaining the statements of his devotees uh, than even maintaining his own promises. If you take shelter of me, J.P. Shu Papa Yoni, even those who are a sinful background, even Shriya, even the, the women, Vaisha, the mercantile class, even the Shudras, J.P. Yanti Param Gadim. They can also practice Ananda Bhakti and they can also attain the supreme destin destination. King Puna Brahmana, King Puna Brahmana, King Puna Brahmana Puna Bhakta Raja Shayasta, what to speak of the Brahmins, the devotees, and the, and the kings. Anitam Ashukam Lokam. Imam Prabhupada having come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service to me. And then the concluding verse of the ninth chapter, which we find right in the heart of Bhagavad Gita, right in the center of Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna's ultimate uh, order to the living entities and inspirational encouragement. Manmana, think of me. Bhavamad Bhakta, become my devotee. Madhyaji, worship me. Mam Namaskuru, bow down to me. Mami Vaisha Shiyukdvavam, in this way, completely absorbed in me by practice of devotional service. Atmanam Matparayana, certainly you will come to me. And this all important, most important instruction of Bhagavad Gita is again repeated in the 18th chapter. And in this way, the 9th chapter concludes. And we are right in the heart of Bhagavad Gita. In our next lesson, we'll be carrying on with the 10th chapter and we'll see that Krishna carries on. There's hardly any, any interruption in this presentation to Arjuna here. Ananda Bhakti. In this chapter, the Raja Guja Jog uh, was described, the most confidential knowledge 
the uh, great souls, the Mahatmas and their symptoms, how, the, how they're performing Ananda Bhakti compared to others. The demigod worship, Krishna uh, actually explains his real feelings about demigod worship, Aviri Purva. And then uh, in the concluding verses of the chapter, Krishna explains the special facilities, the special way he reciprocates with those who are performing Ananda Bhakti. And this is the most confidential knowledge. In the 10th chapter, Krishna carries on to explain how the Ananda Bhakta, how the, the a devotee can worship him and can conceive of him with his various manifestations of opulences. Let us conclude with this comment from Srila Prabhupada. Simply go and preach this very thing. Krishna says, Manmana Bhavamad Bhakta Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru. This is Krishna's desire. Preach to the world. Just be Krishna conscious. Manmana, just become Krishna's devotee. Manmana Bhavamad Bhakta Madhyaji, just worship me. Madhyaji Mam, offer your obeisances to Krishna. Four words, then you become a preacher. It's not very difficult to become a preacher and to become a spiritual master. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.